So my mom, she made this amazing bread yesterday, and it's really good, but my toast is looking a little plain. I wonder what she can do to fix it. All right, let's see if we can get this toast problem fixed. So I found plums last week at the store for a really good price, so I got like 10 pounds of them. I'm gonna make some plum jam and the first thing I need to do is to peel these things if y'all have an easy way to peel them let me know in the comments I tried blanching them and sliding the skins off it did not work so I just returned to the old paring knife method once these things are peeled I need to chop them and my grandmother actually gave me one of these chop wizard things a long long time ago and the original one of course broke but I went and bought another because this thing is so awesome. You can just put these giant chunks in here, push it down, and it cuts them up for you. It even has a way to measure it. It makes my life really easy. It's also good for things like salsa. And we're just going to measure this out according to our recipe. You're going to add all of your chopped fruit to a heavy bottom stock pot, and you want this thing to be pretty big because once you add the sugar, it's going to try to expand on you. When you're canning, it is very important to use an approved recipe. The Ball Canning Book or website is always a good place to go. The last time I checked, you can actually get a Ball Canning Book at Walmart over by the canning supplies. I'll try to drop some links to approved canning recipes in the description box for you. So at this point, we have our chopped fruit. We need to add pectin. This stuff is made out of fruit and it's going to be what helps your jelly to gel. My recipe also calls for lemon juice. We're gonna put the chopped fruit, the pectin, and the lemon juice into a pan and start cooking this down. While it's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get my lids washed and then I'm gonna put them into a pot with some simmering water. We don't want this water to boil, we just want it to simmer and that'll keep them hot, and sterilized, ready to use until I'm ready for them. We should also put our rings into this pot. Again, we don't want to boil it, we just want to keep it at a simmer. So while this fruit is cooking down, we're waiting for it to get to a nice boil. I'm just going to go ahead and get everything ready to the side. I've got clean jars, I've put them into my large stock pot that I'm going to use for my water bath. And I'm going to bring that to a boil because this is, again, this is going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get that boiling. That keeps the jars hot. It sterilizes them. The jars were clean, but the boiling water will sterilize them. So when we're at this point, when it's at a nice boil, we are just about ready to add our sugar. Now, I've got this sugar pre-measured to the side. You do not want to be trying to measure sugar and getting it in this pot right now you want to have it all measured out in a container because we're going to add it all together and we're going to carefully stir it We want to bring this back to a good rolling boil. It should be boiling so much that when we stir it, it does not affect the boiling. At that point, we're going to boil it for four minutes. These steps are necessary to do in this order and for this length of time so that the pectin works correctly. So also with your, with your recipe in your book, you should have some way of knowing how long you're going to process it. We're going to process these for 10 minutes. If you have any foam on your jelly, you would remove it now and put it in a container off to the side. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just ugly. This looks pretty good. I don't really see any. This has been settling for about four minutes. I'm going to get some jars. So obviously these jars are going to be super hot. So I wouldn't recommend touching it. Put them in the jar. 
You want to fill this up to an eighth of an inch. Ball makes a lovely little measuring tool, which I've lost. So I'm just going to guesstimate it. This is this jam is for us, so I'm not super worried about it being exact. We're just going to remove those little air bubbles, and then we need to dip a cloth. I just use a clean cloth. I dip it in the hot water. We need to clean off the edge. So I don't think I showed this earlier, but you also want to put your rings into that simmering water with your seals. You don't want to bring that to a boil. You just want to keep it at a simmer. Then we're going to super carefully, because again this water is hot, we're going to super carefully get that off. Pop it on our clean lid, screw on a band, and then use our jar lifter to put it back in the hot water. I just put a clean bath towel on the counter to protect it from the heat and the sticky. Those air bubbles out. Clean it good. And when you put these lids in, rings on, you just want it finger tight. If that jar rim is not clean, it may not seal for you, so that's why you want to be really careful about that. You know, obviously be as clean as you can with this, but if you get a little sticky on the side of that jar, it's not that big a deal. We're going to go back and clean them all when they come out of the water bath anyway. Another point of caution here is that when you pull those seals out of the simmering water, sometimes water gets trapped between them and it really burns when it comes out. So be careful with that. In our water bath, we want to have at least an inch of water over the top of these jars. We need a lid on our canner and at our altitude, we're going to Boil that for 10 minutes. She fixed it. 